Every dental practice knows that time is of the essence. With administrative duties piling up, you often find less time for the most crucial aspect of your work, patient care. But that's where Oryx comes in, a master of efficiency. Its advanced features, designed specifically for dental practices, streamline administrative tasks like managing patient records, scheduling, and insurance claim processing. Imagine cutting down the hours spent on administrative tasks by half or even more. What does that mean for you? More time to interact with your patients, more time to grow your practice, and ultimately, better patient satisfaction and increased revenue. Now, let's talk numbers. Mismanaged insurance claims and billing errors can take a toll on your practice's financial health. Oryx shines here as well. With the comprehensive billing and insurance management system that ensures accuracy and timeliness. By reducing the risk of rejected claims and delayed payments, Oryx helps you maintain a steady cash flow and boost your bottom line. The simplicity of Oryx also translates into savings. The user-friendly design minimizes the learning curve for you and your team, saving the time and costs associated with training. Your team can hit the ground running and maintain their focus where it belongs, on providing excellent dental care. So we're excited to share that all our listeners have the chance to experience the Oryx Advantage. Click the first link in the show notes below and schedule a free personalized demo. And if you're a startup, check out this limited time offer. Oryx won't charge you a penny until you've reached 200 active patients. That means it's free. Oryx is free until they know you're succeeding until you've hit 200 active patients. So click the first link in the show notes below to schedule a free personalized demo and to get this limited time offer. And go see for yourself how Oryx can bring newfound efficiency and financial savings to your dental practice. Remember, with Oryx, you're always a step ahead. Hey, what's up, Jordan? How's it going, man? I'm good, Michael. How are you doing, my friend? It's been a year since the last 375 knocks. Wait, real quick. Are you in Canada? I am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Break it down real fast if you can. A year ago, where were you at? Well, yeah, since the last time you and I sat down and had a little chat, it's, it's changed a lot. We opened two years ago. And so you kind of chatted with me about 12 months into that journey of the, mm -hmm. the startup. And we were doing well, you know, things were, things were growing rapidly. We were adding new people to the practice. Lots of new patients were coming. And since then, it's just kept going. We've added an associate to the practice since then. We've basically doubled our staff from where we were a year ago to where we are now. And it just really going in positive directions. I've have very grateful and thankful for all the opportunities that I've had in this practice. And it's been just a ton of fun along the way. Nice, man. So real quick, could you briefly introduce your dental practice and the demographic you primarily serve? You got it. So my name is Dr. Jordan Sanders. I own Knox Mountain Dentistry. It is a dental clinic, a general dental clinic in Kelowna, British Columbia. We are, our town is kind of, kind of urban. We're a growing city, maybe about 200,000 people in this, in the city, but one of the most rapidly growing cities in Canada right now, just because of our we have awesome summers and awesome winters and people want to come live here for some reason. Where, where I settled down with the practice is kind of a unique spot. It was this up and coming district within Kelowna that's since garnered the name, the brewery district, which is neat. So we have tons of craft breweries and comedy places and live music and all this kind of fun, funky stuff. And as a result of that, the people that come to this practice are young. We have 3000 patients with an average age of about 32 which is super cool. It's not what I thought when I thought I'd open the doors here because Kelowna has been traditionally a bit of an older community, but that's changing so fast that it's just moving in this direction for us. How is that, man? Do you feel like they're coming in aware and they're like, look, I want to get my cleaning, 32-year-olds, right? Things like that. Or are they just like, dude, I, your bottle hit my tooth, chipped it, and you fix it real fast? I mean, it's a little bit of both. We, we do get some of that. Usually it's like skis or sometimes beer bottles. But a lot of it's young families. We have the mom typically comes in and tests us out and then the husband shows up and the three kids and then their grandparents. And so it's kind of that energy that we've been, we've been working with. 
But yeah, we set up in this really central location. Like I'm on a busy main street with large signage. And so people just, they're all moving to this area and they just see us as they're walking by, driving by. And that's really what brings them in. So it's been kind of fortuitous. They keep building stuff around me, which is working out really well for us. Yeah. Nice, man. Okay. Yeah. And then, so you're a private practice, right? Solo dog, multiple doctor, specialty or? Yeah. So just uh, myself and my associate. When did you bring your associate? It was a year ago, April. So about four months after you and I chatted, that was the, that was when I brought the associate in. Okay. And it was like, once you hired them, that was it, home run, perfect person? Or did you have to like, like yeah. hold associate and bring someone else? No, it was, it was kind of interesting. Like she, she cold called me in February. And at that time, I wasn't ready for an associate. Like I didn't feel ready. And so, you know, we were chatting and we kind of said, it's like, it's not the right time for the practice right now to bring on an associate. And even if it was, you know, it'd be part-time at best. And so she went off and she found another associateship in, a, in one of the adjacent towns. And she worked there for two months and then called me up again and said, I hate this. I can't, like, how do we make this work? And you know, her and I just, we clicked. It was, it was great. And so I brought on an associate faster than I thought I was going to, to get her. And it's worked out. It's worked out amazing. She's great. Did that bring pressure for you to be like, we got to push it now to fill her schedule, do all this? Or was it like already there, there was no pressure? Yeah, there was definitely pressure. I, I told her, I was very honest with her. I said, this, if this was six months from now, this would be easy. It'd be no problem. But because we're doing this a little bit early, like we're, you're going to start off slow and we're going to have to build it up if you really want to work here. And she was okay with that. And so we just, she just hung out and just saw, you know, the emergencies that walked through the door and I fed her most of the new patients, which just actually was nice for me. It let me do more of the treatment that I'd had mm -hmm. kind of getting built up. And since then, she's running two columns. I'm running two columns. We've got three full-time hygienists basically every day. It's busy. You know, it comes with the typical lulls that you get with any dental practice, you know, during the summer and during those early winter months. But we're all doing well. Okay, man. Nice. So then what has been your experience with different marketing companies and which strategies have proved to be most effective? Yeah, I, so I started off with the same marketing company that I'm using now. Now, like caveat to that is I do a lot of my own social media. I had in, in the early days of the practice, I spent a lot of time really establishing what I wanted the brand of the practice to be and how that was going to play itself out on the social media channels. So I do all of that and I still do all of that because I have quite a bit of fun doing it. But I leveraged the marketing company to deal with all of the things that I wasn't that good at search engine optimization, advertising on using Google AdWords and Facebook stuff, building the website, and basically coming up with the synergy of how all of those things can work together to bring people through the front door. Probably the most successful stuff that we've had has been our, our Google, mostly Google Maps. We target a lot of people within the five kilometer demographic of the practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they search up dentist. We pop up in, in one of the top three because of that. Um, and that's been really our boon with bringing new people through the front door. So who is your marketing company? They're a company called Buzz Marketing. They're local here in Kelowna. They've been great. Honestly, I, they've hit, the, hit it out of the park every time. We've done videos with them, photos with them. They, they have all the skills and the tools to do whatever I've needed them to do along the way. We did a mail marketing campaign where they did all of the graphic design. Yeah, they're just easy to work with, which has been the greatest part of it. Yeah, okay. And then you talked about you do the social media. So like break that down for me. Is that like you just do the Instagram, then you schedule it out or you just pump it out once? How does that Oh, work? yeah, yeah. I just, I just kind of, you'd have to kind of understand what our Instagram is to really, to know, like we don't, I don't have a single picture of teeth on my <laughs> Instagram account. Like I don't focus at all on the tooth side of the business when it comes to social media. The social media is purely a entertainment type thing. So we have patients come into the practice and we have this Instagram counter that sits in the front lobby that actively changes when people follow or unfollow the clinic. And so they follow it on their phone and they see the numbers flip over, which is super cool. But then it's just from there, this just 
funny stuff. Like literally it's TikTok videos and stupid things that are my staff and I do in the office. Our outings as a group or the things that we go do outside of clinic hours. It's really just meant to be more of a lifestyle channel than it is mm. something that's meant to show people what we do with teeth. It's meant to kind of, they get to see our culture. You're getting an inner look and in what the culture of the office is like. And that's honestly attracted a ton of people to the clinic. They follow us on Instagram. I get a ton of engagement. And every now and then I get to throw in an Invisalign special day that we're doing. And that gets a ton of traction and people come and book because of that. And so you just post like today, I feel like posting. Yeah. Or like, like that. Pretty, it's yeah, it's never much. like scheduled. When I see something coming up on the reels, that's a fun dad joke or something. I'll share that. Or we sometimes pull pranks on each other in the office. So I'll video that and I'll put that up. And it's a bit unusual, but it's really worked for us. That was kind of the, what we established ourselves as early in the day. And it's what most of our patients expect of us now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't really have, I don't schedule it. I don't, I, I don't use stock photography. I don't mm -hmm. use anything that's pre-generated. I just, it's all stuff I make myself or stuff that I share from other creators and just let it roll. Gotcha. So do you feel like having a content calendar, like guys, it's money, we got to do, would hinder you even more? Like kind of kill the sporadicness of it? I mean, maybe. I think it depends on what works for you. If you're creating content, really the main thing is just being engaging with your audience. You know, especially in my age category, when it comes to this practice, they're in their 30s, they're millennials, they're on Instagram and they're on YouTube. Like those two avenues are huge for us. If you had a older patient population, maybe Facebook is a bit more prevalent for you. But yeah, as long as you're creating the content and keeping people engaged, I think you can do it with a schedule. That's fine. You just, it's sometimes hard to get your team on board with all that unless you're willing to do it all yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So then how much budget do you typically allocate for your marketing? Not as much as maybe would be advised. I think I'm spending, I know I'm spending about <laughs> 3200 a month right now. Most purely Google right now. I was in Facebook for a while. I just found that that wasn't attracting the type of patient that I wanted in the clinic. But what kind of patients was it? Was it really? uh, a, bit, a little bit flakier, mm -hmm. kind of what we might categorize as a lower quality patient, someone that's a bit more you know, impulsive in there, clicking and asking questions and stuff. Some of those people wouldn't show up um, or they'd want things that we just weren't able to offer. And so, yeah, it was just having those, having the Google presence, having people able to see us there has been really what, where the money's been spent. I thought about dialing it back. I kind of tell myself that we've hit a critical mass where the most of the people that we get are coming from word of mouth referrals, but I haven't been able to convince myself to not spend that money yet. I think it's still doing really well for us. Okay, man, that's good. And then how many new patients are you currently getting right now, like in a month? It varies, probably high end, 110. Average, probably between 60 to 80 in that neighborhood. Dude, that's pretty good, man. And yeah. so like pie charted, if you can, like majority, of the, would you say like 80% is from Google? Less so in the earlier days of the practice. Yes, I would say probably that much. Now, probably half. Most of the, a good chunk as we've had self-referrals and people that have, like our thing that we seem to attract is one person from a particular workplace will come to the clinic and then all of a sudden we're seeing all of them. That tends to be how we've built the practice is just by collecting cohorts of people through their work conversations about who's a dentist to see in town kind of thing. Do you tell them like, hey man, talk to us about your work or to your work friends or something like that or, or they just naturally do it? Yeah, we sometimes, it depends on what the work is. We usually engage with our patients pretty heavily, especially in our new patient visit. I don't ask for it as much as I used to. Back in the early, earlier days of the practice when I was doing a lot more of the ground marketing style stuff and really kind of trying to get people engaged, I would 100% ask if I'd ask them to tell their friends about us if they enjoyed the experience to leave, leave a Google review. And most people were really good about that. But now I just I don't need to do that. People seem to do it themselves. Got you, man. Okay. How equipped is your team in converting calls into actual patients? Excellent. Honestly, we did a lot of training related to phone skills and really just 
how we categorize the people that, that call. You know, so our office is set up with a phone tree that's designed to split existing patients away from new patients. And so anyone that is new to the practice will come down a specific route in that call tree and they get a tag that's a new patient call on our end. And so we know when that comes in, that that's a really high priority call. And so they bring them in and it's, we spent hours and hours going through verbiage and call conversion and how to bring some of that skills and get people to actually book and commit to appointments. But yeah, they're excellent. I would say they convert 80% of the calls that come in as far as new people. Yeah, that's really good, man. Do you like sit down at the beginning? Were you like sitting down listening to them and be like, guys, we got to adjust. We gotta... Did you have a consultant? Yep. yep. No, I did that myself. <laughs> so I still do that. We, I still audit call logs and listen to call recordings and say, you know, how I had a company doing it for a while when we were doing the call phone training, uh, which I did through a company called All I found that to be really, really awesome, uh, mm-hmm. it, especially to build some of those foundational skills. They were doing auditing of the call logs for me and grading, grading them. But since then, we've moved away from that because we kind of got what we needed to out of it. And I just do it monthly. I just sit down, I grab five calls and I just go through them and give feedback based on that. Yeah. What to you, Jordan, what would be like, my gosh, this was, this was beautiful, especially the way you handled this. And then what to you is like, oh my God, what happened? You need to change all this. Yeah. I mean, the, some of the most important things that we found when talking to people is using their name. People love their, hearing the sound of their name. It's the most beautiful thing in the world to them. Asking open-ended questions is huge. And honestly, asking for the appointment. Those three things alone are probably the biggest things that I look for when I'm listening to these logs. And really the things that make me cringe is when that doesn't happen. When we don't ask for the appointment or we just, you know, a price shopper calls and we just say, well, yeah, this is what we charge for a crown. And we don't actually ask them to like, do you need a, do you need a crown? Is that, are you going to come and do you want to come in and get a crown? And so, yeah, it's just, you know, the the girls up front are really busy and I get that not every day is going to be everyone's A game, but we try to keep each other accountable. We want to be able to represent the business and the brand the way that, that it's always been and build that so that our patient experience is consistent. And that's really the big thing is maintaining that consistency. How do you approach that now? Maybe somebody has been working for you for a while and then you're like, hey, I listened to a call. You suck, right? But like, uh, how would you approach it? So the way that I have it set up in the clinic, so I, I, I figured out a long time ago that I have certain skill sets when it comes to leadership and there's certain other things that I maybe lack in. One of them is really this, maybe the softer approach to types of feedback. And certain people do well with that constructive feedback and other people don't. <laughs> and all spectrums of that exist in the office. So we built this kind of management pyramid in the office. So I have myself, I have my office manager, and I have a lead assistant. And the three of us filter this stuff out. So my office manager is responsible for everything up front. My lead assistant is responsible for everything in the back. And I'm the kind of top of that pyramid where all of the team will go to them first, or they will approach the team for various things. And then I step in as I need to. So in a case like a phone call, I would just take it to my office manager and say, we need to give some feedback about this particular thing's been happening. And so she'll do that. And if she feels like it was well received and worked well, then that's kind of the end of it. And we just follow up next month. If it's not working, then then we have a bit more of a, a formal sit down and, and work through it. But I prepared a lot of my team and it's one of the beauties of doing a startup and being able to bring your own team into the mix is they all knew what to expect when they came in. They all knew that feedback was going to be just a part of the mechanism and they do really well with it. Honestly, they're all really hungry. They want to do better. We change things so often in the clinic that they almost expect feedback, which works well. You know, there's not a lot of hurt feelings. And even in the cases where people are feeling maybe a little bit taken aback, we, we can work through it together. Okay. So like the hierarchy kind of thing, right? Like you're, hey, you need to approach this. And then if it escalates, you approach it. 
Yeah, it's only, it's, hierarchy is, is a good word for it in the sense that that's really just how we operate when it comes to the operations of the business. When it comes to the actual inter-office culture, like we're a team, we work together. Mm -hmm. We do everything that we can to make people feel elevated and like they're doing a good job because they are. And so and that works well for us, providing positive feedback along with the negative or constructive stuff that we have to really opens up those doors for us to make those changes. Gotcha. Okay, man, cool. And then you said you have, when the new patient call, a phone call comes in, is the software that does that or? Mm -hmm. We use Mango Voice and they have a dashboard type thing where you can build a, a call tree path of exactly how you want. They call in and they get a thing that says, thanks for calling Knox Mountain Dentistry. If you're new to the office, press one. If you are need, want to schedule something, press two etc. and so on. So that's, mm -hmm. it tags their caller ID with a specific NP or, or whatever we use in those cases. So the front knows exactly what's coming in. Gotcha. Okay. And since you opened up, or I guess it's the last time we spoke till now, what have been some of the best and worst companies you've worked with? Well, I mean, the companies, most of the companies that I worked with at the beginning, I'm still working with now. There hasn't been Many, I've moved on from some, not because they were bad, uh, but just because we got out of them what I think we needed to, and we were able to move forward. As we discussed, like I've been with Oric since we opened up, which has been our practice management software. I've been with Mango Voice, which has been amazing. Good VoIP-based phone service. We were using Swell a ton for our reviews and messaging system, but one of the beauties about Oryx is they keep adding features that make it so I don't need that stuff anymore. I don't have to pay extra for some of these other pieces of software now because Oryx has an online review platform now that lets me send out those text messages or emails for Google reviews or Facebook reviews. So we were with Swell and they were great and now we're not because I don't need to. So that saves me a couple grand a year. Yeah. Same marketing company that I've been with all along. And then really our, I really did enjoy the training process that we went through with a company called All-Star Dental Academy. They were the phone skills based course that we did, all module based online, but it really helped. The, it, we did it as a team. So everybody did it. And it was kind of neat because it gave us these common talking points and understandings between what the back was doing and what the front was doing. And they could kind of see eye to eye on some of these things now. So we use them for a good solid year to get those foundations in place. That's pretty much it. There's not, I don't have a ton of other stuff that I need to subscribe to these days. Nice, man. Okay. Out of, there's a couple right out there, cloud-based, mm -hmm. all-in-one platforms, right? Practice management softwares. Why'd you pick Oryx? The original traction for Oryx was really the Koi space stuff. So I'm a mentor at the Koi Center. You know, I was always looking for some piece of software that would let me do the types of exams and dentistry that I was taught at the center. This was exactly that. And the Oryx of two years ago is not the Oryx of today. Like it is, it is morphing and changing rapidly. It's one of the, the beauties about it. We all complain about our practice management somewhere on, on some level, but I don't know another practice management company that has a Facebook group that I can go on and request a feature and the CEO is on there responding to it. Uh, that's a very unique environment. And they listen and they do these things for us and add these features that we ask for. And as great, honestly, it's great. It's been a really wonderful way for us to be able to provide the dentistry that we've always wanted to do. Yeah, that's really good, man. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Oryx, how much did you, can I ask, how much do you pay? It's four fifty a month. U.S. Okay. for Oryx. The nice thing about Oryx is they do offer a way to do just the clinical side. Like if you have existing software that you're using for your administrative side, you can continue to use that while using the Oryx clinical side. You know, we were a startup, so we went all in. We had the opportunity and the time to learn it, but it's super intuitive. Like it's easy. I, I find that they they have their little hiccups here and there, like any piece of software might, but it hasn't been anything that my office manager hasn't been able to figure out and implement. So yeah, yeah it's been a great, it's a great investment. Yeah, because I was going to ask, is it easy to train people on and stuff like that? Is it onboarding or is it more like, oh my God, it's taking us like th three months to get this going? I think if you were converting, 
I think there's definitely some more headaches there, but I think there's going to be headaches with any conversion. If you're starting fresh, it was pretty easy for us. We started from scratch. We did, they have a bunch of YouTube videos on how to, like we never brought anyone in. It was the middle of COVID when we opened. So we didn't bring a trainer in. We just did their YouTube videos, didn't cost us anything. And once we were through with that and we started implementing it, we were comfortable within it within the first month. It wasn't a huge issue for us to get hit the ground running with that thing. Gotcha. Okay. And so you utilize all of it then, all the features yes. and everything. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. What's one of your favorite features from it? Oh, um, one? I have different favorites for different reasons. Probably one of the things that we've come to be a little bit known for is what's called our risk assessments. So Oryx generates a document like 15 pages long. That's basically all of the summary findings from their new patient exam with pictures and all these little kind of easy to understand paragraph templates of the things that are going on with their teeth. And we print this off for people. It has this really informative pie diagram that shows where their risks are. And we give that to people in a little branded folio when they leave. It's kind of like their, it's not the report card. We call it the report card, but yeah. it, it gives them something to that's tangible to walk out with. So that's probably on the clinic side. That's one of my favorites. The review request stuff that they've added has been amazing. That's been really helpful. Texting patients. I just text people all the time. I used to pick up the phone and call people a lot. And now I just text them because yeah. they prefer that anyway. Yeah. So there's that. The It's a good looking piece of software, but looks fresh. It doesn't look clunky or kind of Windows 95-esque type approach. Easy to navigate. Treatment planning is really really straightforward. I, I, list goes on. Like there's not a ton about it that I dislike. And even the things that I have disliked in the past, they've addressed and they brought into the mix. Nice, man. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All righty. So sliding back into the strategies for marketing, could you elaborate on any unique, maybe ground marketing or regular marketing strategies that have been successful to your practice? Yeah, I think so. It's kind of in the beginning, the ground marketing was huge. We basically were plunked into this area that was just starting to come up at the time. You know, there was not a lot there. The building that I'm in was a parking lot for the, the fruit packing plant that's in behind us for two decades before they started building stuff here. But it just blew up when they started. So in those early days, I just went around. I used your scripts. They were great. I went around to the businesses in the area and I dropped off some stuff and talked with the people there that were the decision makers and said, hey, like, we're going to be opening our doors just down the road. Like, here's a sign up sheet where we're going to be taking some names and some information of anyone that might be interested in joining our clinic. And I would collect all that. And I think we had two or 300 names before we even opened our doors. You know, we were making phone calls two weeks before our doors opened and we had pretty much a full schedule. It was just, there's just three of us. So I wasn't seeing many people a day, but yeah, that, that was a huge weight off the shoulders in those early days was just being able to capitalize on, I have names, I have people that are interested. I'm not going to be sitting here twiddling my thumbs, hoping that somebody shows up. And that was great. As we've moved down into becoming a bit more established, it's, I've obviously needed to do less of that. Although I'm kind of thinking that I might do it again. I might do some, get more involved in the community in a sense to do, do some events, do some, we just did an Invisalign day. We had a, we blocked off a whole day. We sent out email blasts to our patients. We did this thing or all we did all day was scan people for Invisalign and we offered a bit of a promo to do it. And we had like 30 Invisalign starts wow, on, that, man. on that day. Like it was huge. Like, so it still works. It, even in established practices, doing boots on the ground type approach really pays its dividends. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for yeah. utilizing the, I could tell you did because you're like sign up sheet and I was like, oh yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good, man. So the Invisalign day, the promo, what was the promo you guys were offering? We knocked a thousand bucks off. So I, Invisalign in our office, we just have a flat fee for it and we just do it all in. It's all your treatment plus retainers for a flat fee. And so we had a, our, the way that our fee works is it's a bit on the higher end. So it allowed me to build in this really attractive looking thousand dollar off promo. And that's really all it took. Like we, we did that and people just, just came we just started, yeah. e we emailed our existing patient base and they, they all filled up a bunch of slots. And then they asked if their friend could come 
do it too. And I said, yeah, okay, why not? <laughs> right. So, and we were doing Invisalign starts on teenagers. We did two 70 year olds. Like it's just, yeah, like it was all, all over the place. Like it was not what I expected at all, but that's just what the, what this group of people needed to pull the trigger was just even just this kind of inkling that they're getting a bit of a deal. Yeah. Interesting. Could I ask what the fee is? 6,500. Okay. No, it's not bad. No, compared to, yeah. Okay. Our main thing too, the reason that we did it initially was that my associate was new to it. And, you know, we, I do some, I don't do a ton, but we just wanted to do some more cases. You know, he said, let's do some cases. And so we did this and it just blew up. It was, it worked out really well. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then have you ever faced a situation where the promised results were not achieved with the expected time frame with any marketing company? Not with a marketing company. I, so everything that I've ever heard and heard people say was how expensive but impactful mail marketing campaigns can be. And so I did one. I spent about eight grand on it. And, you know, I did everything that that I was, that I thought I was supposed to. I had a special landing page or the, that was on the, uh, the card that went out. So if people went to the website that was on the card, it tracked them and was able Mm -hmm. to see who was coming from various sources. And yeah, I mean, as far as dollars per new patient, or it didn't do anywhere near as well as just the dollars we put into Google. Okay. You did it on your EDDM or... What's you that? paid a company. Like, uh, was no, it- uh, so yeah, I, like I did the design with my marketing company. We just did like, it was really nice. It was a big like six by nine postcard thing. And then Canada Post just does, they have a service that, that does the printing and the, um, and the delivery of those packages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That happens sometimes like you mm-hmm. or miss, right? So then as a practice owner, what advice would you give to our listeners regarding effective marketing and ROI tracking? Yeah, I guess it depends on how comfortable you are diving into some of that stuff. Or anything digital is going to be easier to track ROI on. It's really hard to make tangible distinctions about how your dollars are being spent when it's just, when it's a physical object that's going out into the ether. One of the biggest things that I think for as far as ROI goes is capitalizing on what your demographics are. So knowing what your demographics are, knowing how many pieces of property, businesses, and households exist within a three mile or five kilometer radius of your practice. Because realistically, what you're going to get is you're going to get the people that are close to you from where they live. The number of people that come from work to the office is way, way lower than the number of people that come from their homes. And tracking that stuff, if you have a good solid marketing company, they can do that. They can create landing pages for you. They can, you can create different phone numbers that lets you track people that call numbers on various pieces of marketing. You can always do split tests to see how certain pieces of marketing play against each other. In the US, you guys have a lot more leniency in some of your advertising than we do up here, at least in British Columbia. Like we can't really offer promotions to people in a in an open way. I can advertise to my patient base, but I can't send a postcard out that offers people a discounted exam and x-rays or cleaning. That would just be a no-no. But focusing on the patients that are going to be in your practice for the longest, one piece of one piece of marketing that I never thought would be as successful as it has been has been YouTube. YouTube impressions are cheap, super cheap. And the number of patients that I have come in because they've seen my office video that we made come up as a sponsored ad on whatever YouTube video they're watching. Like if you told me that a year ago, I'd say you're, you're silly. That's ridiculous. But it's been hundreds and hundreds. Like it's very strange. They come in and they're like, I saw you on YouTube. Kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. I saw you're out on YouTube. Man, break that down for me. How do you do that? So you go on to YouTube, you decide, is it just like Facebook ads or Google ads or how does it? I don't know if you've ever been on YouTube and watch, you're watching a YouTube video and that creator has an ad all of a sudden comes up in the middle of your, your video. Mm -hmm. It'll just be my ad. And you know, the back end, the back end, like how much do you pay and create uh, it? I want to, I don't want you to quote me on it, but it's like less than a cent per impression or something like that. It's, it's really cheap. It's bundled up with Google because they own YouTube, but 
yeah, incredibly inexpensive. Wow. Okay. And then, so you just have the same video or you create a video specifically for you? Yeah. No. So we, we created a video six months after we opened with this, my marketing company. I spent five grand on it. It's really professionally done. It's on our website. I leverage it all the time. Instagram, I like, I posted on Instagram. I do these things many times over the last two years, but it's just that video. That's the one that's up on Instagram. So they get the intro into the office and they see the area and it's me talking about the services we offer and things we do. And it's just set up in a way to be really attractive and it works. And you set it up in like a radius of only around your, that's what you do, like in YouTube, right? Around your town or your community or? Yeah. Like we, our area is pretty dense. The focus of who I bring into the practice is anybody within six kilometers. So six kilometer radius has about 15,000 people in it and me and one other dentist. So that's kind of the area. And then anything outside of that, people will come. It's just, I've found that as we've matured, our radius is expanding. The people that we start attracting. So now we bring people in from several hours away. They've moved away and they still want to come and see us or they've heard about us. So they'll drive in to do, to see us here just because there's no option in their town. But I think as you, as your practice grows and you start bringing in more people and have a bit more clout, you can expand that radius and start advertising a little bit more broadly. But it really just comes down to trying to make yourself look different than the person next door. And that's not always easy to do. You have, you have to have something that people are attracted to, to be able to do that. Yeah. I think that's pretty really, man, especially like you utilizing YouTube. Cause I feel like nobody's really. Like, oh yeah. Like, it never crossed my mind in the early days of this. It's not, I'm not someone that, that peruses YouTube a ton, but apparently it's by far the most hours spent than any other platform. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Something to think about. Awesome, Jordan. I appreciate your time. If anyone has further questions or concerns, where can they find you? You can give me, give me a call at the office, look up the website, send me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions if you can. Awesome. So guys, that's going to be in the show notes below. And Jordan, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure and we'll hear from you soon. Appreciate it.